TK here for TK and Drinks. Actually, a very special Sunday edition of TK and Drinks today, dealing with mead makers, comps, and classifications. Thank you all for being here today. Whether you're live or watching this in the future, I always appreciate when people pop in, give me those likes, the follows, the subscribes, all that stuff. It always appreciates. <laughs> I always appreciate it a lot. It means a lot to me. Um, so today we do have a kind of unique situation going on. Um, I woke up this morning and had some messages. Um, there was apparently a shakeup over at the Valkyries Horn, and um, their best of show, homebrew best of show winner, Jason Roloff, off balance meads. A lot of you know him, he just popped in here. Um, apparently, there was some sort of situation, and he was actually stripped of his best of show for homebrew, was given to the next person down, and there was a, like a whole thing. I had messages coming in, so um, I reached out to Jason, I reached out to the Valkyries Horn. And trying to, you know, get a feel of what's going on. I feel that there might be some contention out there. A lot of people think I might be trying to stir up drama and everything. And I'm just really just trying to bring some open discourse, um, some open discussion to the situation of, you know, uh, what goes on at comps, the rules, why they're in place, and um, exactly like just kind of, you know, bring bring some a lot of like behind closed doors discussions to a more open forum because. Um, when things aren't like transparent is like what a lot of um, gossip and a lot of rumors are started. You know, transparency kind of shines a light on all that stuff. So let's get Jason in here. Again, I reached out to Jason. Jason did not reach out to me for this. This is me reaching out to both of these parties the industry and to uh, very naive about how the competitions work and how we're, um, you know, all these different things. Um, I, I want to get a better understanding of what's going on because I feel that there's a lot of um, a lot of unfortunate gray areas when it comes to this um let's see i don't know if uh, jason's going to be able to oh, accept yes yeah, go live with off balance hopefully that goes through that second time um hey appreciate everybody down in the comment section hey what's going on steven kyle or uh yeah kyle's down there uh steve from sidetrack appreciate everybody popping in um uh oh for some reason it's not letting jason join in let me um uh oh, invite. Oh, yeah, except from off balance, go live with off balance. Um, but it, like I was saying, I, I really want to have a um an un an uncomfortable discussion, but it's how things progress. And I don't necessarily think it has to be an uncomfortable discussion. I think that you know it's an uncomfortable situation, but the discussion itself shouldn't be uncomfortable. I guess I, I guess that now I'm just kind of being semantic, splitting hairs in a semantics argument. But yes, basically it's a, it's a discussion that needs to be ha had, because that is how things progress. Um, I was curious mostly as to why. Okay, here we go. Another request to join. Maybe this one will go through this time. Um, you know, there's a whole there's a whole um, procedure to how things go through and how competitions are organized and everything and there's there's a whole process and like i said i'm really naive to that process having never organized a comp myself having never been um you know on the behind the scenes i've been at competitions and judged them but that's about it you know i kind of just show up and um do my thing as a judge so I, the the organizers and everything they have a much greater understanding and, you know, there's other questions I wanted to have about, um, you know, why the why things had to proceed the way, you know, procedural questions about why things had to had to go the way that they did. Um, mean Brian says, were the rules enforced, published or unpublished rules? Can if so, can they be enforced or still keep BJCP sanctioning? See, and that's just it. From from what I understand, okay, I got to figure this thing out with Jason. He's he's out there. Cancel the invite from him. Let me send him. Um, Check your video settings or something, Jason. The last last couple guys had, for, for whatever reason, the video had turned off on them. It wouldn't let them join because they had video off. So I'm going to send you out an invite there. Um, and that's just what, it, is it the BJCP who, you know, um, there's been talk in the um, in some of the Discord groups and the doing the most Discord and in the uh, man-made mead Discords about, um, you know, what exactly is going on. And, and, and I'm really just... <laughs> Oh, it looks like Jason's here. Yeah. I can't. Okay, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay, better now. I can. Okay. <laughs> can you see me? Yes, I can. All right. Well, we'll go with it then. Um, um, because I, I don't want to risk losing the connection again. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But we're good. 
uh, yeah, but like I said, everybody, this, this is, if for those who don't know, this is Jason. He's um, known as Off Balance Meads in, in the comments and in the, in, in the mead world and everything like that. Um, I reached out to Jason and I reached out to the Valkyries Horn competition again after this morning, um, early this morning after being uh, bombarded, eh, maybe not bombarded is a bit term, but after being sent a, a number of messages about a shake up at the Valkyries Horn, it turns out that there was some, um, I, I don't know what the term for it is, I don't want to use the term confusing because it seems like that's a bit of an understatement for the thing, but it, there, was, there was a situation over there um, and you were had your best of mead uh, for the homebrew competition removed from you and was it other metals as well i just wanted to get like a, a better understanding of what's going on because i feel like there's a lot of you know um hype running around and i'd rather get it from the horse's mouth and try to squash any like rumors that are going out there yeah there was a silver and a gold and the gold obviously went for onto best of show um sure. i mean the scores are still, still the scores are still posted and the score sheets are still there and right. i have all that kind of thing um but just the medals have been i guess absolved um mm. for lack of a better term um have been okay. disqual disqualified officially disqualified officially so that means you won't be receiving them in the mail or anything like that and everything's just kind of going on but all the but they're still published um score sheets so like i, I don't really understand that I mean, I'm not sure that you even understand it, to be fair. I mean, so I got a call on Thursday. Um, tell, so the, the results were live, I think, a week ago. Um, yeah. I got a call on Thursday um, from Matt uh, Weedy. Did, uh, starts with a W. He's the guy who did the, like, the live stream of the yeah. awards. And basically, and basically right. said, you know, told me that they were essentially I was disqualified because mm -hmm. they de they deemed me – uh, as a uh, commercial entity, essentially. Okay. Okay. A com now, I commercial entity. Yeah. So, so like the I have a, an LLC. That's a fact. It is okay. listed as off balance metering in the in the state of Wisconsin. Sure. Uh, I have not applied to the TTB or ABC for licensure, anything like that, which is pretty much for most competitions is the like the tipping point, right? Once you once you go, and right. I think like Jeremy Clau Jeremy Clausen is an example of this because like sure. he was, you know, a, a, we all know who he is. He yeah. went for that. He went for that application, and then you can't do it from a home side anymore. Which is that to me was always the understanding. Now yeah. the rules state that you can't you can't have applied applied for like a commercial license or entity or something like that. I don't remember the exact nomenclature. Sure. Um, you can't have produced this in a commercial setting, which I do it in my basement. It's, I'm in it right now. Um, I wasn't right. doing it with, with the aid of any commercial meteries or any assistance by anybody but myself. So right. that to me was why I submitted as a home brewer because I am a home brewer. And, and rightfully so, in my opinion, I don't think you necessarily fit all the criteria necessary. Now, to be fair, their rules that they have posted for all this are even fairly vague when it comes to those. It it, it almost le leans a little more more towards um, open to interpretation. I don't necessarily mean the Valkyries Horn competition it, it by itself. I think it's just kind of like a general. It seems like I don't know if it's like the AMMA who puts these together, if it's the Homebrew Association, the BJCP, whatever. It's just kind of like a a standard form, you know, T's and C's types of thing that they put out there. So I, it, and that's what I was really trying to get. Um, reach out to Valkyrie's Horn and get their comp their um, you know their side of the story so to speak and they, they responded back with in a couple emails um, basically kind of saying I'll never read it verbatim but it was something along the lines of that they had multiple um, complaints from outside of the organization I don't know what that means um, you know it was very kind of vague and but it's basically that their hands were tied the organization is what it is it, it is bound by the the rules that they are um and you know they're, they're going to try to get somebody to come in and reword these rules kevin metsima i can never pronounce his name correctly um in the discord had uh, mentioned something about the ama is going to be rewriting rules um the rules so that kind of makes me lean towards like this is some sort of amma you know, right, that somebody complained to the AMMA or, or something like that. Um, I, 
and to your point again as well, I think Klaus is a phenomenal example. I did message him prior to us coming down here just to let him know that I was going to have his name, you know, in my mouth and all that type of stuff. Just again, because I want to try to have as much open discourse yeah. about this. There's so many of these types of conversations that have happen behind closed doors and comment sections and private discords and whatnot, even in public discourse, but still, you know, kind of convoluted. And there's really, um, there's really a need for for this type of stuff to, to come out into the light. Cause like you said, I, I personally believe you're handing this with like the utmost of decorum. You know, you're, you're, you're taking what they say with a grain of salt and just let it, you know, letting the chips fall where they may. You don't, like, like I said, you, I reached out to you. You, you, this doesn't seem to be bitter grapes on your, on your, or sour grapes on your part or anything like that. Um, but like it, uh, it does to go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think the, where the conversation got, spun up over the past 24 hours mm -hmm. you know was the fact was the fact that there are other people who are are in the exact same situation as i am there's a ton of mm -hmm. people that are we'll say well-renowned mead makers and and you know beer brewers for that matter who yeah. are trying to do the same thing right they're trying to create a business and the way to do that is you, you have to start some kind of business entity but right like i said i think the, that the traditional line of what's commercial, what's not commercial, all depends on when you apply for licensure. I've seen other competitions that have a pro side and a you know commercial side and a home side that make right. that distinction. Now, you're right, it, Valkyrie's Horn doesn't say that. I'm not here to sit there and put them on blast. But I mean, like there are other people who this year won medals. I'm not gonna call them out because I don't want them to get disqualified. There's uh, right. somebody who is starting a meadery that's well known that was, we'll say, associated with uh, a couple medal winners. Uh, the individual's building a building, and like mm -hmm. I'm not going to call them out, but I think every most of the people on here know who I'm talking about. So, sure. like, it, it's uh, to me, it's just a matter of if you're going to take that away from me in this competition that it needs to be fair for everybody. I mean, that's the only thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I, I didn't reach out to, to the competition. I only spoke with the gentleman who I spoke with and I was like, listen, there's, there's nothing I can do. It's not like I have legal grounds to stand on. I mean, my own right. personal opinion, my own personal opinion will just, will keep it above board. Yeah. But it, yeah. it, to me, it's a matter of not everybody in this, in this exact situation is being treated equally. And 100%. I know, listen, listen, man, I've got screenshots of, of that show that was in first place uh, that show was the best of show i saw i was watching the live broadcast i was watching the live broadcast and took a picture of it because whatever we are all going to be nerds about it and <laughs> it's still cool right you know right i mean uh, do i want that do i want that wicked awesome horn that, that shit yeah man that thing is super cool hell yeah um, you know I, it's like hey i if there's only so much of fighting city hall i mean at the end of the day you know yeah. cool man it's I got other little uh, trinkets behind me. I've got that thing up there, which is the ultimate prize anyway yeah, um, for me. Mazer Cups are the best. The whole, they, they, they're pretty awesome. Uh, best <laughs> of show, Mazer Cups are even better. <laughs> but, you know, like, I, I just, yeah, it's, it's, it kicked ass, dude. I almost pissed myself when I saw that. Um, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, I just I want to get a business going. Um, you know, yeah. I don't want to burn any bridges because I, I, I mean, I don't know these guys personally. I don't have a vendetta. It's not like I don't know them. Sure. Um, right. You know, it's I, I think it does bear some uh, discussion at whether it's an AMMA level or even at like for comp organizers of which I know because I'm part of a pretty big homebrew club in Wisconsin myself, the Beer Barons in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and know the guys who who run the who run our our really big comp and like you know they have that probably would have that same discussion too if we had a commercial side where the difficult side is for somebody like myself is like i was told okay well maybe you know next year if you want to do it even if i don't have licensure yet like okay run, run on the commercial side well okay let's say i do that and right. i win something now my name is out there is associated right. with this business's name now when i want to go to say um up, like upcoming is drunk monk i mean i just won right. That's what's in this glass right now for operation fermentation. Um, they also have a, a commercial side to, that yep. let's say now I try to enter in there and I'm told, well, you're not actually a commercial license, you know, have a commercial license. So you should be in the home side. So right. like, I don't, it's a gray area that I, that 
is tough. And I know that out of the, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people who enter these competitions, it's, oh, I don't know. Oh crap. I don't know if I lost awesome. I didn't, couldn't see him on my, on my screen anyway. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's plenty of, of competitions out there that are putting, you know, in, in my opinion, putting their, um, putting the sake of the competition on the line, like, you know, for letting these types of things happen or for having these types of things happen, you know, it, I, I'm, what I'm most interested in is, um, you know, they said that there was complaints from outside the organization. It doesn't seem like you're going to be able to avoid complaints, I guess, is getting kind of what Jason was saying. Um, you're, you're not going to be able to avoid people complaining. You know, there's always going to have somebody that's going to gripe about something. You enter in the homebrew in a certain status. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the professionals are going to complain if you enter as, as a professional without that, you know, the right criteria. It, it doesn't matter. It's like you're in a lose-lose situation. There's a lot of people that fall into those gray areas. Um, let me see here if I, I can't. Uh, so there's no request to join, doesn't cancel it. Uh, let me see here if I can't send him another request or what happened. Um, well, I'm not even seeing him in my thing. Maybe he'll have to come back. Please let me know if I'm still coming through. And I'd hate to, for this to be on my end. I always have to ask because my internet connection is always terrible. Um, but I, I mean, I get, that's ultimately why I wanted to have this discussion is, you know, there's, I want there to be a standardization or a discussion about a standardization of different rules and a different, um, you know, criteria for these types of situations. Um, you know, and one thing I, I don't want to, I, okay, cool. Thanks, Mean Bruce. One thing I don't want to um, come across, it, I found, okay, well, you look Our, like you're coming through. Well, you're back, but I still can't, can't see you. That's was really crappy, but hey, at <laughs> Sorry, least you're man. back. We're back. No, hey, it's, it's the internet. It's not you. Um, but like I said, what I want to, what I want to bring through is that there's a lot of people, um, that don't um don't fit into either one category that fall into this middle gray category that like we were kind of discussing kind of discussing earlier um it, it, and it's not fair to these people to be able to be out like i said you're gonna it doesn't matter if you if you're who somebody's going to be upset in, in some situation you're never going to be able to please all the people all the time so it seems like in in my personal opinion the the way to handle this situation would have been necessarily give that you give your win a caveat you know, and then change the rules for next year and say, hey, this is the way it is. You know, it, it shouldn't be um, the entrance fault, the entrance, it's not say your fault, but it, the entrance didn't suffer at the, at the fault of, you know, poor wording and poor, you know, operating procedures, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. it's I mean, Again, like that's my it's, personal opinion. Yeah. It's, I mean, <laughs> I mean you know, I, I I, I can see, I mean, yes, I have a Facebook page and an Instagram page and, and, you know, I, uh, maybe I, I mean, I probably made the mistake because I posted something from the off balance mead page mm -hmm. with their name in it. And which maybe that was the input, you know, was sort of the tipping point and okay, whatever, man, I, I made, did something that I shouldn't have exactly. but at the same time that exactly. that's part of, that's part of a promotion of, of what a, you know, potential awesome bur thing that they had going on, you know, a burgeoning business is is like hey man i you know i like trust me i'm i make good stuff here's proof you know i it, call it successful um yeah. so I, I don't know maybe it, i just have to you know share that stuff uh, a little more discreetly um uh, in the near term which I, i'm not sure which is really unfortunate you shouldn't have to do something like that i mean because the only real laws and rules and as far as that should be enforceable like that in my personal opinion, again, are like TTB laws and everything. Now, they again, if they want to have their own laws, their competition, they can set up their own rules, whatever they want. You know, everybody's got to send in a bottle that has a little tiny tuxedo and hat on it. You know what I mean? Who knows? <laughs> it's a you know formal entries, but yeah, um, I mean, I mean I, I, full disclosure too. Like, so when I spoke with with the gentleman from from yeah. the Valkyrie's Horn, you know, as well, you have this like it looks like a business. I'm like, okay, I understand that. You know, right. I haven't applied. I don't make right. money off this. I'm not selling it because that would be illegal and right. it would potentially damage my future status with the federal government which i don't want to do right um you know have i you know have i sold a couple t-shirts yeah sure i have but that's nothing under a winery license and right. i think you know the, the optics of it i can agree with if i'm on that side of it to say it looks like you know or maybe there's a perception that a right. commercial meadery has won something on the amateur side. 
but it, like again man i mean my club associated with it is the beer barons in milwaukee because that's my homebrew club um you know, right was, I, I, I can't reiterate enough that this is not being done in any commercial way it literally is a guy in a basement right. um with some buckets right. and carboys and a you know, a small little hydro press and, right. you know, somebody who spent, spends way too much money on this hobby of ours <laughs> that we all do. Um, well, because I love it. I love it. It's, and it's, it's practice to get better. And, you know, it's, right. I don't know. I, well, I, I did what I could. And I guess it's <laughs> maybe I just have to be a little more proactive of reaching out to comps that have this to say, sure. Hey, you know, I, I mean, I was, you know, what, what would be above board? I mean, I spoke with somebody who's associated with Operation Fermentation it's just from this past weekend because I did win. Right. I, won two, I won two medals there. I was like, well, am I, am I going to get disqualified because right. of this? And they're like, well, well, no, because you don't fit their definition of it, which right. is the, pretty much the same definition that I said when it comes to application. It's an application status. Right. But there's no, but there's no way that I, I'm pretty sure – that like you could look right now to the TTB to find out if I've applied. I think that you know yeah, this, there is. is under seal and it, it, I okay that that I, that I don't know. It well, like I said in the in the email that I received again, not verbatim, but it, it said that there was complaints from outside the organization. It doesn't specify which organization. Doesn't specify, um, you know what. <laughs> What type of complaints, you know, it, it, and sure. it, it's really, su and that's, that's what I really wanted to get out of all this is, again, mo not try to slam any competition, not try to slam anybody in, in particular, but just get more of an open discourse um, about what, what are, what are rules and regulations, what are the rules and regulations that people are, are, are trying to follow? Um, because like you said, I'll bet if, Somebody in the comments here had went and pulled up. What are the what are the six? Um, let's just stick with the AMMA ones because for the mead maker of the year, what are the six AMMA competitions? Mazer Cup. If you pull, go pull up all those and pull up the rules and regulations. They're all going to be about the same as any other competitions that's set up. You know what I mean? It's pretty much a competition. It, it's it's like I said, it's a standard, almost copy and paste, terms and conditions type of response thing that they put in these in these different sections. Um, it, 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 there's too much of it that's left open to interpretation. There's too much of it that's left open to um, people being, being able to be swayed by, um, you know, outside forces and everything. You know, it, it, it sounds like, again, without knowing who, what, you know, are there legitimate legal ramifications if you're holding a competition like this, you know, um, are there legal ramifications that somebody can take that you have to, you know, for whatever state you're in, you fall under some sort of, you know, lotteries and giveaways, you know, commission that, you know, some sort of alphabet team that nobody's ever heard of, but there's actually legitimate legal ramifications that can come from this. You know, these are the type of things that I want, that I was really hoping to be able to bring forth. And, you know, there's a lot of fear, just a lot of people that fear that um, this is basically going to turn into a flame fest and it's just going to be a lot of people talking shit because to, to be fair, you know, the, the, the discords and stuff like that and, and the more safe spaces can get tend to get a little one sided and a little heated. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily out of malice. It may come across that way, but I think it's definitely just more of people um, being unsure sure of how to react. It's like, hey, I fall into this category. You know, I may respond with a snarky comment, um, but my. My, where it's coming from is from a place of genuineness. You know, am I now legitimately at, at risk of not being able to enter competitions because I fall into this gray area? Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's the biggest concern that, that I have and we'll say a number of people that, that I know that are, you know, in a similar situation and, and probably, you know, somebody who's eventually going to watch this is saying like, yeah, I, I fit in that window too of what is, what is the risk? I mean, do I think that there's any real legal risk on uh, on me or anybody like me? No, there's there's not. Yeah. You know, but it's it's just the fact that it's okay. You, you put all this work in and you you think you're doing the right thing, right? Which is what the intent. What you know what, what the intent was is I'm entering on that side, and I mean I want to make it clear I'm 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 not pissing on Valkyrie's horn in in, in any way. Like I I right. abide by I abide by the decision. I don't like it, but okay. So what? I mean I'm not going to go and use my small little platform that I do have and burn that bridge because I don't see a purpose to it. Right. Um, you know, I, I think that,
you know, if there's an opportunity to change the way that this is done and, and be a little more clear. I mean, I do think that, you know, the line that I've kind of identified is difficult to prove. For the most part, it's an honor system, right? You know, a hundred percent. Could 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 I have gone to I don't know whatever my my buddies up at Hex and brewed something in on their equipment or use some stuff and then brought it home and because I did a collab with them, you know, a year and a half ago and entered that I could have, yep. but I'm not going to because I have, cause I have ethics and I want to be fair to everybody else. Well, and it sucks because the wording, again, I was trying to find it on here. I, I, I can't quite find the, the discord thread that had the, the rules, but like if I was reading through the rules, it was kind of, it, it's even open, it's vague enough to be interpreted as anybody who's ever worked in a commercial metering, not who still currently does, or who has, you know, ever been in a commercial metering and produced a meat on a commercial scale. Like, you know, there's home brewers that go into commercial meteries, you know, Klausing was one of them, um, and who brewed these, you know, collab beers as a home brewer collab, yep. you know, commercial metery. And just, again, the vague, the vagueness of the wording kind of says that, well, if you've done that ever, it can be interpreted as that you're not allowed to ever enter an amateur competition again because you, uh, quote, unquote, had pro level, you know, whatever. It, it, I, I doubt that it was written that way. But with these types of vague, um, vagueness and um, uh, these types of things left open to interpretation, those types of things are unfortunately going to happen. And it's really... Um, it's really unfortunate that, you know, there couldn't have been a better solution. Again, you know, it, it, again, not to shit on, on Valkyrie's horn. It, it, you know, they feel they did what they feel was in the best interest of, of their competition and whatever. It's their rules, their, their thing at the end of the day. Again, I just feel it'd be awesome to, you know, be able to have a more, a more open discourse behind, uh, you know, in front of the camera, or in, in, you know, in a more open forum as opposed to just, you know, emails and, and you know, <clears throat> private phone calls and whatnot, just because it seems so suspicious, especially, again, this is me saying this is nobody else. Nobody put this in my mouth and everything. Um, but especially when the guy who's coming up behind you in for best of show happens to be kind of friends with the people who run the competition and everything, it just look, it's just bad optics. You know, I'm not saying that they would do that on purpose, but holy shit, that's really bad optics. I'm going to, I'll leave you to your opinion on that one. Not best I don't open my mouth there. No, it, it, like I said, I understand. Like, I really wish to be fair, and I completely understand why everybody does what they do. You know, everybody's got their own personal opinion. I, I wish that more people were a little, you know, more cavalier with their opinions like I am. Um, but, you know, everybody's got to do their thing and yeah. run their business the, the way that they, the way that they feel. I just feel that there could be a lot more learn from more, you know, open discussions. And, and to be fair, a lot of people get really butthurt about stuff like that. You can't say certain things without, you know, how many times did we say in this that we're not holding any mouse, we don't feel anything towards Valkyrie's horn, two dozen, you can say it a dozen and a half more times, and somebody will find a little clip in there and, and edit around that and make you look like a total fucking asshole. Yeah, I mean, it, that's why you'll never see anything on any of my social media points of going, hey, this is, you know, whatever kind of really negative assertion to it. Like, I, there's no... I have nothing to gain from that except for to look like a petty little baby. Um, hey, I, right. that's fine. If call it my mistake, like I said, at the end of the day, man, I know to me, I know who, I, who won. I, I feel good about that. I know that, you know, it was sort of, uh, I guess, yeah. reinforcement of all the hard work that I've put into learning how to make meat over the past, I don't know, five years since I started right. this. Um, and, you know, it, it, I still feel, I still have a positive impact from it, you know? I, I, still have the score I would if I were you too. Yeah, I still have the score sheets, I still have the feedback. And, you know, it's, so be it, man. Right. Um, you know, like I said, I got Drunk Monks coming up, and I don't know, maybe I can pull something together and I won't have to um, submit on the home side of Mazer Cup this year because I yeah. might not do it anyway because, yeah. yeah. So what? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you stopping in and joining me today, man. Um, I'd like to keep this discussion going. You're more than welcome to stay and hang out if you want. If you want to, if you got stuff to jam out, I know I kind of popped this on you last minute, but I think we got some good discussion in the comment section. I'd really like to keep that going. So, you, like I said, you're more yeah, than welcome yeah. to stay, or you're. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off because okay. I've got some. We'll say I got to back sweeten and do a little stabilization on 36 gallons of mead for a project that I'm working on. There you um, go. Yeah, well. We'll leave the details.
Bill's uh, up for yeah. debate. If you want to find out what it is, you can you can follow me. Um. <laughs> yeah, and there's another thing. Anybody who's not following um, Jason over at uh, Off Balance Meads, go get them a follow. He uh, does giveaways apparently that gets you kicked out of competitions and stuff, and he has delicious meads. So go give him a follow. Find him at a competition. Get a pour. I say yep. that all again, tongue in cheek. Hey, I'll, uh, I'll, seriously, I'll go give him a follow. And, and I'll get that bottle that I said I was going to send you for free. I'm not <laughs> charging for it. No, uh, no, no. And uh, I guess I'll probably uh, see you at Sugar Belt. Yeah, I'm doing my best. I am doing my best to be at Sugar Belt, man. I'll, I'll get. I'll shoot you a message about that. All right, buddy. All right, take it All easy, right, Jason. I'm, I'm Appreciate out. you. See you later. See later. You later All right. All right. So thanks to Jason for popping in. But like I said, I, I think we got a great discussion going here in the comments, and I'd love to comment on a few of these things here. Um, um, wow, we got see, so I'm all the way back here at Boyer. I'm assuming that's Bill Boyer's comment it says commercial is defined as anyone that has worked in any production capacity at a commercial metery serves servers and back off to the police are excluded within the past two years prior to the start of prior to the start of judging. I'm assuming meaning judging in the competition. So again, I think there's a lot even to be you know interpreted there. Commercial is defined as anyone has worked in any production capacity to commercial metery. So like work that is that defined as employed by or is that defined as somebody who stopped by and you know helped throw a couple pieces of fruit in for a for a homebrew collab. You know, I think there's there's still and that's just right off the top of my head. I'm sure if I sat here and thought about this, we could really dig around and, and you know find even more potential interpretations. You know, I I have a background in you know aerospace quality control and like looking for things like this are kind of like they just fall natural to me not to say that i'm the best not to say that you know it, it's just you know there's some things that like I, I just recognize and it just seems really odd to me and again to, to to my point earlier i'm pretty naive about how competitions are set up and everything but from along the lines of the people who i have talked to that do know you know it, it's a little bit different of a situation um you'll have to you will have to do it commercial again on Mazer. So if he's going into Mazer in a couple months, you're saying that all these people who have, you know, potential LLCs, but without TTB licenses and everything are going to need to enter commercial, but they don't necessarily even qualify as commercial because they don't have, you know, it, it, it's an LLC for a potential business. Doesn't Is it a winery LLC? No, it's an LLC is for a name. You know, yeah, it says metery in it, but that doesn't mean you're a legally licensed producing metery. So, it, you know, he can't go sell his stuff. So it doesn't necessarily qualify him as a commercial metery. I think it's, you know, a, a bit on the um, a bit on the presumptuous side to just say that type of thing that, you know, anybody who's out there that's a metery and planning automatically qualifies. You know, how many people do you read in the comments say, I'm planning on opening a metery and never get around to doing it? So maybe the fact that he's got metering and planning listed on his social media is a bit, you know, a, a bit of a, you know, bridge too far by comparison to some other people who fall into the same category. But I think that's a bit of um, a misnomer. It, it, there's plenty of people out there who go into meteries and planning and never become a full fledged meter. You never even get to a TTB license. Shit, there's people that get TTB licenses before they even go out and try to do any other, um, do any other work. I, I, I don't know what the exact rules are. I, I can't remember if you can get a TTB and start applying for COLAs and stuff without an LLC. I know I don't think you can get one. I know you can't get an LLC without a tax identification number, but I don't know if you can get like a, a TTB thing. Like the, the federal government's all weird how they do all these things. It's like you need them all to get the other ones, but you don't have to have them to apply and get the other ones. It's like they, you have to have them all to work together, but you don't need them to get the other ones. Like there's no order of operations. First you do this, then you do this. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody who's come out with like the best way to do it, but I don't think there's any official order of operations or procedures set forth by the government um, as far as doing that. Cause you'd have to standardize it for all 50 states. I mean, they could on the, on the federal level with the TTB, but like they couldn't say that you'd have to have your states, this, this, and this in, in, in order first. Um, because not every state's the same, you know, some states require this for, you know, for city, some require city and county and state, some states just require um, city and st it, it's a whole different thing. So it, it's, it's, um, it's a bit, you know, it, it, again, it's more gray area stuff that I feel would be better defined in an open forum like this than people behind um, at, at, you know, at meetings and behind closed doors and through emails and starting to set these types of things up. You know, there's a reason why there's a lot of people that don't join groups like the AMMA and the Meat Institute 
because they don't feel like they're getting their money's worth out of those organizations. And I feel that there's also a lot of people in those organizations that won't leave um, or speak badly of them because they feel that they've already dumped so much of their money and so much of their time and energy into these organizations that they feel that it would be shameful or um, embarrassing to leave. You know, and I think we need, if we're going to talk about safe spaces, you know, like we were talking about, I mentioned earlier, where keyboard warriors feel like they're in a safe space inside these discords. We need to create legitimate safe spaces for people to come out and say, hey, I spent my money on this, this, and this with this organization and with this group where I did this and I was wronged and not have to feel like they're going to be shamed or made fun of um, for that. Because again, part of an open discourse and open discussion is being able to bring um, light to things that aren't necessarily positive, you know, like I said, this at the beginning, we said, this, is this going to be an uncomfortable discussion or is it a discussion about uncomfortable topics? You know, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. But either way, it's a discussion that needs to be had. Um, so let's continue scrolling down the comments. They won't let you enter commercial without a TTB license. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. What do you mean is a home brewer coll- uh, What that mean a home brewer collaborating with a meadery? So there's home brewers um, who haven't officially, um, and maybe I should keep keep reading collaborating um um yeah so what they yeah so there we go so yeah so anyway so what that means is home brewers um who have some sort of notoriety either with a within the mead community itself maybe with a local meadery that's gone commercial maybe with friends that they have that has a meadery um they'll go in and do a collab with that meadery they'll go in and as a home brewer and they'll they'll get their home brewer logo, you know, that they intend, typically intend to be um, their logo for their commercial meadery whenever they get that opened. And they'll actually do like a, a collab, you know, I, I don't, as, as far as like the in-depthness of the collabs, I don't really know any of that, you know, wh- whatever they do, that's all on them. You know, collabs are always kind of a, a, a weird thing anyway. But the fact of the matter remains that they're a home brewer who's now been in a professional commercial meadery and has had that type of experience who now fall into this potential gray area that within the um, these rules that are set forth by the competitions. Again, I don't, I don't know where the rules come from. I didn't know if they were set forth by the competition organizers, if they're set forth by the TTB, if they're set forth by the um, AMMA, if they're set forth by the AHA, you know, the American Homebrewer Association, or or whatever, you know, and I'm sure it could be, it could very well be different for all of them. It could be a standard thing across the board. Um, but that's what co- uh, home brewers collaborating with commercial meteries do. And, you know, even even though the the, the um, home brewer doesn't necessarily benefit or profit from the sales of that mead, somebody is, you know, there's money being made off that mead. Um, so, you know, that could technically qualify you as, you know, a, a commercial entity in that business, even though you're, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, de facto, but it, it, you know, it is, it is what it is. Maybe I use that term de facto wrong. It, you know, it might be in proxy, um, but it is what it is. Your your name is still on a bottle that's out there making money. You know, it's really unfortunate that there's people. You know, he doesn't want to mention any names because he feels bad about what happened to him, and not so much that he, you know, he. I don't think he feels bad about what happened to him. I think he just feels bad in the, about the situation that something like that could happen to something else. Like I said, he took this with amount of decorum that I think is to be um, applauded because. Cut me on the wrong, wrong day, and I could have came unglued about some bullshit and would have been on here making a complete show of my ass to everybody. And it, and I would have been the one wrong doing it, but I, I'm just saying, you know, catch me in the wrong day on the wrong time. Tell me some shit like that that it is arguable and debatable, and tell me that I don't get an, argue, an arguable or debatable point in the conversation. Ooh, man, that, that, would have been, that would have been a much different conversation on that phone with that guy. It would have been way different. But like I said, he handled it with a, a certain amount of decorum that I think is um, commendable. Um, then s- see here, sidetrack me says, Brewtubers make more make money, although not much, on making meads via subscriptions and merch. Does that make them commercial? You know, again, I think that's a very phenomenal point. You know, I, I believe that the gray area, that gray area kind of says that, um, you know, if we go back up here to read what Bill wrote, if I can scroll back here a little ways, you know, Commercial is defined as anyone that has worked in or produced any worked in, in any production capacity at a commercial meadery um, within the past two years, you know, with a couple exceptions for, you know, back office and, and people and whatnot. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. It, it, they're not technically because they can't sell their meads, you know, but here in this particular situation, Jason wasn't selling his meads either. 
hasn't been and he's fallen into that category. So, you know, I, that's a phenomenal question. And again, this is the kind of the gray area that I wanted to discuss because there's, you know, brew tubers, you know, what about somebody like me? I don't sell my meads. I don't have a TTB license. I had an LLC from when I had a distribution company. Um, but does that mean that now because I had a, held a distribution license, I couldn't have entered any competitions in the time? Because I did, you know, I wasn't necessarily working for a commercial meadery as I was there doing production. But like when I was at competitions, I had to let them know, hey, I um, sell mead for this meadery and this, you know, for Birmingham and, and Space Time Mead and Cider Works. So if you have any of their stuff coming across my table, you probably shouldn't. And you know, it, it was it was kind of not even really a big deal, to be honest with you. I, I thought people should have made a bigger deal about it than they did. Um, but nonetheless, you know, it, it, I feel like I could fall into that. And I've never even I, I got like 10, 15, not even 15 meads under my belt yet. So it's really interesting to see, you know, the, the dichotomy of people's opinions on this. You know, I'll be checking with Carvin on the homebrew side for Mazer Cup. Off balance says thanks for the heads up, Bill Boyer. Seven Circle Joint. Appreciate you guys. Everybody's popped in just. Just a tax ID, yeah. LLCs are most protective for individuals. Uncomfortable conversations are sometimes needed for improvement. Yes, appreciate all of you. We're looking to catch up with YouTube, et cetera. Um, I, I don't know what you mean quite by that, but I agree that rules definitely need to catch up with the current generation. There's a lot of people out there. Um, you know, content happens, things happen. You know, it, one thing that I, I do want to recognize and commend um, at least most of the competition organizers that I know, they're doing these as, again, I and I could be wrong, but my understanding is a lot of this is all volunteer basis, so they're not necessarily getting paid for all these things. You know, I'm not sure where all the entry money goes. Um, when you do enter these things for the commercial, I assume it was going to, you know, pay for venues and to pay for, um, uh, I guess mostly just the venue and the time. Uh, um, I guess that would be compensating the competition organizers. I, I just assumed that all the money was going to, for all these entries, was going to the process, so to speak. I didn't necessarily think anybody was taking home, quote unquote, a paycheck. My terminology, I don't know how, whatever it is, you know, from these competitions. You know, if somebody's lining their pockets with this money, that's a little bit different of a thing. You know, I, I was under the impression that competition organizers, at least when you talk to them, they pretty much make it sound like this is all you know, a volunteer thing, which is, it takes a lot of time, money, and energy. Um, when I was at Domrus Cup um, back in 2023, they had a, uh, their location had a pipe burst during the freeze. So they ended up having to scramble to get a new location. You know, I, I heard that there was a situation, um, you know, that, that those types of situations aren't uncommon where you have to find new locations. So I, I, I again, I, just a lack of understanding, I'm, you know, I'm slow getting through these comments about how these situations work. So maybe if, maybe if the money is going to line, you know, if you have, you know, this do some quick math to say you got 150 entrants at $10 an entrant, you know, what's that, $1,500? You know, that's, $1,500 seems like it could be, you know, what it would cost for you to be able to rent a place and to, you know, buy lunch for everybody and to be able to, um, you know, Put the things necessary together to host this type of event you know does it sound like there could be a little bit of money left if you have one of these larger or larger competitions that has commercial sides where they're you know like 50 to 100 dollars entry you know yeah the metals hopefully you know there's i know there's some competitions that have some really nice metals you know that valkyrie horn that's a really nice horn like jason said that does look like it'd be a really cool thing to have um it was a texas mead cup has those um or maybe it's operation for fermentation. There's one of the Texas cups that has these like really cool handmade ceramic cups that are painted, hand painted a different color every year. So I, I guess that's the type of stuff that I was thinking and assuming that the money went to, and not really that it's lying in anybody's pockets. Uh, sorry, I went off on a bend of a tangent there. Uh, this is the other part. For any further, anyone that has applied for commercial licensing or rented space for a planned meadery is excluded. Anyone illegally selling, trading amateur meat on public. So, okay, again, there's a phenomenal gray area. Anyone illegally selling or trading amateur meat on public forums. You know, it, what's illegally selling and trading to one person might not be to the other. It sounds like an area for a lot of people to come sideways with sour grapes that, you know, maybe necessarily people don't want to trade with them with their, for their meads. You know, it, it's unfortunate that there's, and it, you know, Bill, you make some phenomenal meads. I've had the pleasure of having some of yours. Um, you know, I, I, and I'm hoping that you're just, you know, reiterate, you're, you're just, you know, communicating to me what the, what the rules are. Cause I know you're an incredibly knowledgeable person about these types of things. You've been to doing comps forever and 
and whatnot. So I appreciate your your input and your knowledge. Um, but again, I think these are a lot of the terms where gray areas is. What is illegally selling? What is um, is it illegally selling and illegally trading, or is it illegally selling or just trading amateurs? Like you can't trade because every freaking competition I've ever been to is basically nothing but a fucking trade fest. You know, anybody who takes home a bottle of mead after the competition could be arguably trading amateur mead. You know what I mean? Do people send it in. Did they have any? Most people, when you start sending in meads to competitions, don't even know that when the competition is done, if your mead doesn't make it to a far enough far enough along in the competition that any of the extra bottles are kind of just set on a table for people to take. You know, I'm not trying to say this to bring light to it for people to shut it down and to throw an outrage about it. I'm just, you know, saying that these are the types of things that fall into potential gray areas that could disqualify people by, you know, by the, the, the vagueness of these rules. Um, you know, I'm going to have the AMMA and the Mead Institute both on in April. And you can believe this is going to be something that I'm going to be discussing with both of those organizations because they're going to be the ones who are trying to accreditate and host um, events and everything. And if this is going to be the type of thing that continues, again, I'm somebody who's only four years into this Mead thing. As somebody who had been into this for multiple decades, um, you know, I could only imagine that there's been other things that have been equally, if not more, frustrating that you know have either been resolved and now we have things in place to um combat those issues or even worse or worse yet that we haven't addressed those things and it's something that still perpetuates to this day i, I think it's really unfortunate that it's you know i you know unfortunately I, I think it's a plight of such a small unique niche industry um but it's a double-edged sword because that means that we can you know we're so small that we can make a difference um that it, it it's still, it's not something where it's, you know, I think there are a lot of people who say, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's politics, you know, it's just, you know, like Jason mentioned in the conversation, fighting city hall, you know, well, I don't think it's necessarily like fighting city hall, or if it is, it's fighting city hall in a pretty small fucking town where, you know, if enough people could gather up and, you know, do what they, again, not try to keep the torch and pitchfork mentality down, but, um, you know, maybe something a little sterner than writing a congressman, you know, could find some happy medium in between, you know, try to show up like Karen's at a, at a, at a town hall, but again, some, something firm yet, um, you know, polite yet firm way of, of putting through, Hey, this isn't how we want to be. You, we need competition organizers to put on competition or to put on competitions as much as competition organizers need judges and people to enter those competitions you know there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there again in back room discussions and closed private discussions talking about how they're not going to enter competitions anymore they don't feel it's fair or you know competition organizers talking about how man i really wish we could get more competition uh people for our competitions beer competitions have you know they open up a competition in um in 24 hours you know they've got you know, 75%, 80% capacity, if not sometimes that are, they fill up, certainly certain categories fill up quicker than others. And me, me competitions are having, having difficulties finding enough entries in historical meads and, and dry meads and certain categories that they're doubling up on, on, you know, entries and, you know, doubling up dries and semi-sweets or sweets and semi-sweets together. And this is the type of, you know, this is the type of play that we want to make it to, to nitpick something. So, um potentially minute again this is completely without knowing the legal ramifications that might be in place in their particular state where they held the competition i don't know what all those types of things i was trying to get them on to discuss these things with me they decided to decline on that um which you know i guess if they feel that this is going to turn into a, a nothing but a shit talking session uh, i really i i feel bad um unfortunately that's is the way that a lot of things on the internet tend to go so i guess i can't really hold them against it for that but um i'd like myself to at least be known and please anybody out there spread the word that if you want to come to me with any sort of information i'll take any mead maker anytime commercial um, amateur or whatever who wants to come on and discuss anything like this uh, my, my i have a completely open door policy um i i don't know if there's a lot of people out there that think that they have to be reached out to by me before you're welcome to come on my show please do not i have a open door a welcome mat outside um the only stipulations are you know being able to find a time that works for both of us to make it work that's the only real thing you know and, and i'm not going to let you just come on and, and flap your gums about some shit that i don't that i'm not cool with you know i'm gonna let you come in here and just run your mouth about hating other meteries and this type of stuff you know but you know general pleasantries aside i'm open to pretty much everything i definitely 
missed something just popped in i can catch you up later homebrew clubs aren't a part of this discussion we aren't employees make no money and just an opportunity there's opportunities usually arise from doing well in competitions um and so i never did any of those types of things nothing of value was ever received every meet i've ever given was 100 percent gratis um but that, that's under the commercial so what works with jason's favor yeah he's excluded from commercial is what i gather um does the selling or trading include trading another homebrew mead to each other's homebrew meads? Yeah, and that's another thing. You know, there, there's just a lot of unfortunate gray areas that are, you know, that are popping up because of this. And, and like I said, I'd much rather bring this up into the light to where everybody can talk about it um, and so people can discuss. You know, I'm trying to get back caught up with this because I think there's a lot of, um, I, I'd rather, I really want to get up here. I'm, I think I'm almost there. If you post it on a public or on a public in on a public or on a public discord that could be um, under the amateur rules they have this amateur mead makers must make their meat outside of a commercial setting and this includes brews on premises sites commercial collaborations and see now now that now is it that here again gray area must make their meat outside of a commercial setting and this like, is that all their meads that they ever make? Is that the meads for the competition? Um, again, I can be, I, I, I can see that they intended it for it to be for this competition, but when they go and do stuff like Ixne and people because of these things, it makes me think that that's not necessarily the case. Because, you know, do we know that he sold this one particular mead, quote unquote, if that's the case, you know, whatever the, the gripe may be, is the fact that he's doing it at all? Um, you know, it, dang it. I think that it's inferred, not bottle sharing, but providing a bottle of, for a thing of value. Okay, so what about people who, um, who make meads for, um, uh, for like somebody's wedding? So they're not going to make any. They're not going to make any money off of it. But if somebody comes to you as a as a mead maker and says, "Hey, I really like your meads," because I, I know there's a lot of people have done this. I, I'd be honored if you would make a mead for my wedding. Here's all the money, not to pay you. We're not buying any meat from you, but you let me know what the ingredients are. You let me know what the bill is for whatever it is, bottles, everything, all the, all the everything. You let me know what that is, and I'll write you a check at the end, and we'll have that go. So now here you are. You're not necessarily making a commercial meat. This meat isn't for sale. You're not getting paid to produce the meat. You're being compensated, though, for all the products and everything that would go into that meat. And in my opinion, that falls well within this gray category. And if you've ever done that, not even just for the meat that you're entering into, not just, again, Valkyrie's Horn, I, I feel like I'm done with them. It, it, with any competition, it's not just about Valkyrie's Horn, it's about every competition. If you've ever made like a meat like that, enter any type of meat into a competition, not even the one that you made for the, the, the wedding, so to speak, that you're now... Are, fall into that phenomenal gray area of somebody can just do something like this. And again, the, the part that really has me riled up and going about this is the fact that nobody wants to have an open discussion about this. You know, it, there's people in, in, in the comment sections are going to comment and do what comment sections do. You can't let that like prevent you from, um, you know, speaking your, your side of the story. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like I said before, it's the lack of transparency that gets people, um, all riled up and, and it gives, lets um, conspiracies and, and these types of things take place and take hold and become, you know, bigger than they really ever should be. Um, see, sidetrack me. There have been some accusations of judge influencing via trades. I'm sure there has been, and those types of things aren't new. I've, at every judging competition that I've been to, not a whole m bunch of them, but it's like always a thing. Hey, you know, um, no getting up from the table and walking around and championing your mead. Don't, you know, hey, um, there's this mead that has this, you know, in the description. So when you see it, you know, keep your eyes out for it type of thing. They make it really low key and everything like that when people do it. But I've seen people get up and, you know, again, it's typically it's older guys that have been older. When I say older, I meant like, like older in the mead communities, not necessarily older as an age, but people have been in the community for a longer time. People that have, have established patterns and rhythms within the community. And they're like, well, this is the way we've always done it. This is how we're going to continue to do it. Um, and it, it it really is that you know it, it, it accusations of judge influencing on trading um you know that could be said about anything though you know what i mean could be said that if you if you're 
trading bottles to judges like you can't that that i think would be a, a bit of a hard thing to do like i said i think that the accusations of judge influencing has been more of this is my you know you you have to know exactly what somebody was sending in and then they would you know have to be able to push your meat forward and then like i said i think that's where like certain terms and discussion and, and descriptions of in competitions hey look for the one that says description of um you know used uh french blueberries from the alps or something like that you, if you see the one that says blueberries from the alps you know that that's my meat and that's the one that you're going to champion forward you know shit like that i think that's the type of thing and then then when their meat wins then that person could trade them some bottles i just see it, it interesting unless there's a sit i mean that's how i see it I, I, again i'm really new to all this stuff and everything so if um m crispin if that's you know there's some other type of way that there's accusations um via judge influencing of judge influencing via trades other than that please let me know I, i'm all ears um, i'm pretty sure that that's, that's a very rare edge in the case yeah i, I think i'm I'm not sure. Like I said, I think it would be really hard for that to be a thing um, to happen just based on how all the um, competitions are set up and everything like that. Like I say, it's not impossible, but I think that's something um, that would take a lot of a lot to make it work out in somebody's favors, typically for Jason to, you know, get in there and start showing bottles off to people. Hey, you get my meat to the top. We're going to make sure that you get you get a bunch of bottles and a bunch of props. Now I have, like I said, I definitely have heard stories about people selling bottles illegally out of the back of their trunks and using that money to fund what is now today, 2000, March 3rd, 2024, legitimately operating business. Um, but I don't th think that's the case here. You know, J nobody's ever accused Jason of that. I don't believe there's any legitimate accusations of that. Um, I, again, I wanted more from them from the Valkyrie's horn in this particular instance about why this is happening. And I, I just don't see that's happening. Um, no one has ever paid me for meads or ingredients. No. And, and that's what I'm saying. I don't necessarily think that's a very common thing, but there is, there are people out there who have been compensated suchly say, Hey, you make me a mead for my wedding or for a bachelor's party or whatever the, the occasion may be, you make me a meat and I'll compensate you for the time and ingredients because your friends know that they can't pay you legally for all this stuff. And they had your best interest in mind. They, they're your friends. They don't want to, they're not trying to dick you over and trying to do something suspect, but they know if they can skirt the gray area and pay you on the side, you know, for all the ingredients and everything like that, you know, maybe they let you borrow their car to go pick it up or, you know what I mean? There, there's, there's certain types of pay for play type of things that are, you know, operating gray areas. And I, I think that the, the biggest thing would be, um, it just, it, it could be, these new types of things could be handled better. It could be people, um, you know, like I said, my initial knee jerk reaction is let the wind go through, throw a caveat on it. If you feel that it needs to, that if it's that big of a deal, you know, let the, let the wind stand with a mark for history for the annuals of history to always, you know, be there and then change the verbiage to be much more um, objective and so much subjective and let, uh, you know, let the future go on. Uh, um, says, I'm not saying that. So oh, sidetrack green mountain says, I do it out of the kindness of my heart for the loved ones. Just clarifying you do the wedding example made me think of you. You're the best. Cheers. Awesome. Well, you know what? And it's, you know, it, it's something that I think is a bit, um, a, a bit, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm really doing my best to, to try to keep a level head about this. And especially with so much, so much lack of knowledge on my part, so much not understanding what it takes to run a comp, what it takes to have um, accreditation for these comps from, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure you can't just start up a competition. You know, I think I saw man made mead pop in there. Um, you know, him and doing the most well, I also think popped in there. They started the mead stampede. You know, I don't, I don't follow enough, um, of their behind the scenes to stuff to know if they are, uh, if the mead stampede is a hundred percent AHA accredited. And if they're part of, um, I, I believe they're not in the AMMA circle because I think that's only a very small, you know, six or seven of the groups. Um, but these guys started a competition. I'm sure they have to jump through all sorts of hoops, just like Kevin, who started Valkyrie Storm. There's all these hoops you have to go through. And it would just be really nice if these people that are jumping through these hoops 
didn't have to leave a lot of that stuff up to the gray area because the last thing that they want to do is have to spend time debating, um, you know, unpleasantries like this. You know, they they want to host a competition, give the competition entries the best experience possible, drink some quality meads, hopefully while they're at, at, you know, while they're having fun doing the judging. Cause come on, we all like to drink meat. That's why we're doing the judging and being in a competition. Cause you want to drink it. You want to try it out. You want to give your valid opinion as somebody um, who enjoys meat to other people who enjoy meat and, and whatnot. Uh, so it, it's just really, really like I said, I, I feel like at this point I'm just kind of rambling. Um, so if, if there's anybody that wants to has anything that they'd like to add to it, feel free to pop in for a second. Um, otherwise, I think I'm kind of just winding this down. If there's any other um, comments, questions, concerns, uh, and like I said initially, this is never meant to be a um, <laughs> chug a beer of meat. I don't have any meat to, here to chug. This is the last of the bottle I brought in. And the other thing I have in here is a, like a 50% limoncello, and I don't do liquor chugs anymore. I have bad experiences from younger days. Um, but like I said, this was most definitely not meant to be a slam valkyrie's horn specifically slam competitions it, it, it's more of a let's take the quiet parts and start saying them out loud because people benefit the the greater the greater majority benefit from these types of situations when more people are aware of what's going on um you know i really wish i had an answer for for what everything is like i said unfortunately i'm i'm really in the dark about this i just thought this was something uh, when I heard about it, that was deserving of um, an open conversation. And it's really unfortunate that people think that I'm out here trying to gossip and trying to ruin um, ruin good things and just trying to not let, not let things slide. Um, it's not that I'm not trying to let it slide. I just really like to get a, a better a better understanding for everybody involved because if somebody's getting started to start entering competitions on a heavier scale, you know, these are things that I think would benefit me and a lot of other people. So. Um, we need a governing body that can sense rules. The BA, the AHA aren't, AMMA aren't, but seem to be online to do so. Uh, maybe the MHP or other comps um, can make a boilerplate suggestion for a T's and C's. You know, this would be all phenomenal things. You know, I, I don't, I, I agree. I think the AMMA has a lot of good intentions. I also think that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, Know, they've been around for a long time, and I haven't seen a whole lot in the short time that I've been around um, that really looks like I can put my they they can put their fingerprint onto something that they've done for um, the greater good of the industry. And, and it's really sad to say that. And um, I, I'm really hoping that this discussion with them on in April goes uh, um, goes better than today's interaction with. Um, with this whole thing because I, I really would love to be able to again like i said have an open calm collected mature discussion about how to better these um these situations so everybody like i said i understand you're not going to please all the people all the time but there definitely needs to be rules in it so that it doesn't just seem like when something happens it's done arbitrarily um it because again this this is coming off very much like a um you know but do as I say, not as I do type of situation. Maybe that's not the right colloquialism from my childhood, but it very it very much seems like there's, you know, when, when things are done behind your back and your parents are just telling you, just do this because this is how it is, you know, don't ask any questions. It just instantly peaks my, well, what, that's not fucking right. What, what, what do you mean? I need more of a reason than just because I said so. Like I said, I'm rambling. Um, but I appreciate everybody popping in here today. Uh, join me on Wednesdays at 6 p.m., typically 6 p.m. Pacific time. Check out my pinned post on my Instagram for the upcoming um, interview schedule. Set an alarm, mark a calendar. I appreciate when everybody, anybody pops in. Um, have a phenomenal rest of your day, everybody. And again, leave me a comment in the section. Uh, leave me a comment down in the comment section uh, with any of your thoughts about what today's discussion was. Otherwise, I will have a great rest of my weekend. You do the same. Peace.